Okay, we are moving into our reading today, Chapter 4, Journey Through A Course in Miracles, text by Ken Wapnick, Ph.D. We are reading The Ego Sphere of the Atonement Principle. Section 5, I'm sorry, The Ego Body Illusion is the clearest statement in A Course in Miracles of the ego's defense that makes it impossible for us to question its motives. As we have seen, the ego projects its thought system of separation from the mind to the body and then causes us to forget what happened. Consequently, we can never question the fact that the defense does not work as promised. The purpose of our making the physical world was ostensibly to protect us from God's punishing wrath and certain death. The ego told us that bodily existence would protect us, but the body dies, and as we do not know about the mind, we have no recourse to the ego. No way to confront it by saying, but you said, we do not know what it said. The following passage explains this. 5, 4, 1 through 3. The body is the ego's home by its own election. It is the only identification with which the ego feels safe. Since the body's vulnerability is its own best argument that you cannot be of God. This is the belief that the ego sponsors eagerly. Here is the expose of the ego's clever maneuver. It tells us we are creatures of God to cite the Bible who created us bodies in his image and likeness. Yet we suffer from the body's mortality. The ego argues that if God is eternal and we die, we cannot be of God. This in turn means there is no God and we are on our own. This is typical of the ego's warped, though persuasively logical thinking. Section 5, paragraph 4, 4 through 6. Yet the ego hates the body because it cannot accept it as good enough to be its home. Here is where the mind becomes actually dazed. Being told by the ego that that it is really part of the body and that the body is its protector, the mind is also told that the body cannot protect it. Jesus speaks of the decision-making part of the mind to which the ego speaks. The body cannot protect us because the body is itself vulnerable. It becomes sick and dies, proving that the wrong mind's thought system of guilt and punishment is alive and well. Though hidden behind the ego's shield of a suffering world replete with moribund bodies, Section 5, 4, 7 through 8. Therefore, the mind asks, where can I go for protection? To which the ego replies, turn to me. The mind, and not without cause, reminds the ego that it has itself insisted that it is identified with the body. And so there is no point in turning to it for protection. In other words, the ego has lied. On some level, the son knows it, yet has conveniently forgotten the plan he chose and with which he continues to identify. As we now read, section 5, paragraph 4, 9 through 11. The ego has no real answer to this because there is none, but it does have a typical solution. It obliterates the question from the mind's awareness. Once put out of awareness, the question can and does produce uneasiness, but it cannot be answered because it cannot be asked. This passage wonderfully describes the ego's duplicity in telling us we would be protected by the body that would keep us safe. We accepted its word and then forgot our origin. While we know something is wrong with this system because the world and body continually fail us, we are ignorant of how to fix them because we do not know their source, which the ego has obliterated from awareness. Since we know things here are terrible but have no clue why, 
we invent insane theologies that speak of God's mysterious will, failing to recognize that if this were really the will of God, we would have nothing to do with him. As Jesus says later, if this were the real world, God would be cruel. I'm going to go, um, I'll keep reading this. The situation we are in makes no sense, but again, since we have become mindless, we have no real recourse for help. We stumble through life year after year, decade after decade, century after century, trying desperately to make this world a better place, and we fail miserably. We attempt to make the body a more comfortable home, yet are doomed to failure because the thought that underlies the world and the body continually betrays us with its lies. The simple truth is that the separation from God never occurred and can never bring us love. One last passage fleshes out the ego's purpose even more cogently. 5, 6, 4 through 6. By becoming involved with tangential issues, it hopes to hide the real question and keep it out of mind. The ego's characteristic busyness with non-essentials is for precisely that purpose. Preoccupations with problems set up to be incapable of solution are favorite ego devices for impeding learning progress. From the point of view of A Course in Miracles, all activity is non-essential. Yet even if we were to look objectively at our everyday experience, we would have to acknowledge that many of the things that preoccupy us are unimportant. We need to remember that learning occurs only in the mind. And as long as we are kept busy with the things of the body, we will never learn the lesson of the mind's ability to choose again. The rhetorical question remains, why were we ever so insane as to choose the ego in the first place? And I will stop there for today. I hope you have a beautiful day, evening, whatever it may be. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.